The Life and Sad Ending of Larry Hagman Larry Hagman Martin was born September 21, 1931, in Fort Worth, Texas. His mother, Mary Martin, became a Broadway actress and musical comedy star after his birth. His father, Benjamin Jackson Hagman, who was of Swedish descent, was an accountant and lawyer who worked as a district attorney. Hagman's parents divorced in 1936 when he was five years old. He lived with his maternal grandmother, Juanita Presley Martin, in Texas and California while his mother became a contract player with Paramount in 1938. In 1940, Hagman's mother met and married Richard Halliday before giving birth to a daughter, Heller, the following year. Hagman attended a strict academy, Black Fox Military Institute, and briefly Woodstock Country School, a boarding school in Vermont. With, when his mother moved to New York City to resume her Broadway career, Hagman lived again with his grandmother in California. A few years later, his grandmother died and Hagman joined his mother in New York City. In 1946, Hagman moved back to his hometown of Weatherford and attended Weatherford High School, from which he graduated. One summer, he worked for oil field equipment maker Antelope Tool Company. Although his father wanted Hagman to become a lawyer and join his practice, he was drawn to drama classes and reportedly fell in love with the stage. He graduated from high school in 1949 and decided to pursue acting. He attended Bard College, New York, majoring in dance and drama, but dropped out after one year. Hagman began his career in 1950 acting in productions of at Margaret Webster's school at the Woodstock Playhouse in Woodstock, New York. That summer, during a break from his one year at Bard College, he worked in Dallas as a production assistant and acting in small roles in Margot Jones's theater company. He appeared in The Taming of the Shrew in New York City, followed by a numerous tent show musicals with St. John Terrell's Music Circus in St. Petersburg, Florida, and Lambertville, New Jersey. In 1951, Hagman appeared as in the London production of South Pacific with his mother and stayed in the show for nearly a year. In 1952, Hagman received his draft notice and enlisted in the United States Air Force. Stationed in London, he spent the majority of his military service entertaining U.S. troops in the United Kingdom and at bases in Europe. After leaving the Air Force in 1956, Hagman returned to New York City where he appeared in the off-Broadway play Once Around the Block by William Sarian. That was followed by nearly a year in another off-Broadway play, James Lee's Career. His Broadway debut occurred in 1958 in Comes a Day. Hagman appeared in four other Broadway plays, God and Kate Murphy, The Nervous Set, The Warm Peninsula, and The Beauty Part. During this period, he also appeared in numerous, mostly live, television programs. Hagman's first television role was as Kenneth Davidson in the 1957 episode Saturday Lost of the syndicated crime drama Decoy, starring Beverly Garland as the first female police officer in a television lead. In 1958, he joined Barbara Bain as a guest star in the short-lived adventure drama series Harbor Master and appeared three times on Lloyd Bridges' syndicated adventure series, Sea Hunt. In 1960, he was cast in the CBS summer medical series, Diagnosis, Unknown, in the role of Don Harding in the episode, The Case of the Radiant Wine. In 1961, Hagman joined the cast of a daytime soap opera, The Edge of Night, as Ed Gibson, and stayed in that role for two years. In 1963 and 64, he appeared twice in segments of the CBS legal drama, The Defenders. In 1964, he made his film debut in Ensign Pulver, which featured, featured a young Jack Nicholson. That same year, he also appeared in Failsafe with Henry Fonda. In 1965, Hagman was cast as Jeannie Barbara Eden's master and eventual love interest, Air Force Captain, later Major, Anthony Nelson in the NBC situation comedy I Dream of Jeannie, which ran for five seasons from 1965 to 1970. The show entered the top 30 in its first year and was NBC's answer to the successful 1960s magical comedies. 
Two reunion movies were later made, both televised on NBC, I Dream of Jeannie 15 years later in 1985 and I Still Dream of Jeannie in 1991, but Hagman did not appear in either of them. In 1978, Hagman was offered two roles on two television series that were debuting. One was for the Waverly Wonders and the other for Dallas in the role of conniving elder son and businessman J.R. Ewing. When Hagman read the Dallas script at his wife's suggestion, they both concluded it was perfect for him. Dallas became a worldwide success, airing in 90 countries, most notably in the United Kingdom, where it saw its highest viewership outside the U.S. and was regularly enjoyed by members of the country's royal family. Hagman became one of the best-known television stars of the era. From then on, Hagman became one of the highest-paid stars on television. For his performance as J.R. Ewing, Hagman was nominated for two Emmy Awards for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series in 1980 and 1981, but did not win. He was also nominated for four Golden Globe Awards between 1981 and 85. By the end of its 14th season in 1991, ratings had slipped to the extent that CBS decided to end Dallas. Hagman was the only actor to appear in all 357 episodes. In November of 1996, he starred in Dallas, J.R. Returns, a two-hour movie in which the ratings were a huge success for CBS, as well as in the network's drama series Orleans in 1997, when his role of George Luther Charbonnet gave him some of the best reviews of his 36-year career. In his personal life, in 1954, Hagman married Swedish-born Maj Axelsson, they had two children, Heidi Christina, born 1958, and Preston, born 1962. Longtime residents of Malibu, California, they then moved to Ojai. Back in 1995, Hagman underwent a life-saving liver transplant after he was diagnosed with liver cancer, which was most likely brought on by an approximately 40 years of heavy drinking. His clinical picture was further complicated by cirrhosis of the river, which had been diagnosed three years earlier in 1992. He was also a heavy smoker as a young man before quitting at age 34. In June 2011, Hagman had stage 2 throat cancer. He had an acorn-sized tumor removed from his tongue in 2011. In June of 2012, the cancer was said to be in remission. And then in July, doctors diagnosed Hagman with splastic syndromes. Sadly, Hagman died on November 23rd of 2012 at Medical City Dallas Hospital in Dallas following complications from acute myeloid leukemia. He was 81 years old. He was cremated and his ashes were scattered.